Okay, so this is the story of my drum, whose name is Thrum. And you'll probably hear why in a bit. But um, quite a few years ago when I lived in Chicago and worked night shift in downtown Chicago, um, I was looking for a kind of a percussion instrument. I was hearing some music in the back of a um, song that I was listening to um, on an alternative kind of spiritual channel. And there was this particular sound it was making in the background. And it, the sound I learned shortly after was made by a musical instrument. And I hope I'm not mangling the pronunciation, but it's a South American instrument called a guiro. G-U-I-R-O. And it's traditionally made out of a large-ish gourd, probably about the size of a man's forearm or so. And it um, has these ribbed sides on it, kind of like what you see on this soup can here. Right? It has these ribbed sides on it. And it's used to make a rhythmic sound with the stick. Okay, so um, let's see if I can duplicate this a little bit. All right, now that's a little bit of a poor imitation, okay? And uh, I'm going to set the camera down. It's going to go dark for a second and just listen and see if I can get this a little better. Okay, so that's generally what a guiro sounds like. Um, and so I was looking around online for where can I get a guiro. And I found that they had them at um, the Guitar Center in, um, in our town. And so I was going out to Guitar Center to kind of take a look. I was also interested in hoop drums is another possibility for a percussion instrument and i went out to guitar center and when i got there i went in the back room and there was this kind of pile about almost as tall as this table you see here you know like about the height of my knee or so deep with percussion instruments that were like on clearance sale and sitting right on top of it was this hoop drum right here. As you can see, it's not a natural skin uh, drum head, all right? It's a uh, fiber skin. Um, it is wood framed, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and pick it up and kind of show you. It's got a wooden frame, as you can see. Now, the, uh, the fall leaves that are all the way around, um, I added um, after I bought it to kind of personalize it because it was kind of an autumn thing. You know, this kind of stuff calls to me more in autumn. And then I want to show you um, how I have this drum mounted, right? So when I'm drumming, um, this is an old shoestring, and it was a shoestring that I used to play with our cat, uh, Taboo. I used to call her Tabby Boo. And uh, she passed away unexpectedly when she was about uh, 11 years old. She wasn't that old, really. But how I hold the drum is like this, right? So when I'm drumming, I'm holding it like this with my left hand. So the drum is kind of suspended by the strings. And that really lets it vibrate a lot. And you'd be amazed. You know, this drum doesn't seem that big, right? It's not one of these really big, like, two, three feet across shaman's drum. It's like, this drum is about, I want to say, 16 inches across. And, you know, it looks small. But I'm going to go ahead and drum it for you just a little bit. 
All right, so I need to set the phone down and uh, give it a little bit of a roll here, but you're going to hear this thing is pretty powerful. So sometimes if I'm wanting to be a little bit easier on it, I let's see if the mic will pick up that deep resonant warmth that this thing has. All right, and then I can drop it a little bit easier. Okay, and then I'm going to show you what I'm using for a drumstick. Um, I don't know what else to call it. Uh, okay, this is me and my technological Western self with my artistic side as well. All right, so this is a inch and three quarters dowel rod stained, and then uh, the burning you see in there was done by hand by me okay and let's see if i can lay that down so you can see all right what it's actually saying and i sanded it down and i did this with burning by hand with a magnifying glass all right on here so this is personalized as well and I did the staining and sanding and everything. And you can see I kind of like softened the end of it. So it wouldn't, you know, be harsh on the drum head. Um, I got it fairly rounded. And then I made a nice soft kind of grip on here out of uh, brown electrical tape. Um, this has got a nice, just the right amount of give to it. You can get a good solid grip on this, you know, and uh, it's pine, so it's nice and light. Uh, it's got a good balance. It's really easy to work with, all right? And as you can see, the drum laid down like that is really muted. I could really whack that, but you can hear when it was suspended from the strings how um, how strong and powerful this drum really is, you know. And in shamanic tradition, uh, drums are called spirit horses, all right. In some tra traditions, so this is my drum, and it was there waiting for me on a pile of what I would almost call throwaway instruments, the way they were treating them. But I brought it home and I kind of gave it a little bit of a dress up and got used to it and gave it its name, Thrum. And there you go. That's the story of how I found this drum. And then not very long after, I found Sacred Hoop magazine in the Barnes and Noble magazine rack, and they don't carry that magazine there any longer. Um, it's only available online. Now there is a print version still, but you have to special order it in print, but you can subscribe to it in PDF. And it's a fellow over in Wales, England, um, that he's in a small village in Wales that does that one. It's a really, really good uh, magazine if you if you like that it's got wonderful stories but um, anyway that was my early introduction to shaman shamanism and shamanic journeying and of course I've read a lot online and some books and stuff like that and then got a chance to have someone uh, help me with journeys and now I'm kind of starting to get into trying to do it myself now the trick is being able to drum 
and journey at the same time. It's kind of like singing and playing at the same time. It's not that easy. But there you have it. And that's Thrum. And as you can see, I came up with a solution for the Guiro too, much later on. All right. Thank you.